such an honor and a privilege to come into your homes and speak the Word of God. The Bible says the Word is like a hammer. The Word is like a sword. So open your heart now as the Word of God comes forth. Isaiah 60 verse 1. It says, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light is coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Watch this now. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, and his glory shall be seen on you. Turn to somebody say, The glory of the Lord will be seen on you it says and all nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising go with me to Haggai chapter number two I'm laying a firm foundation Haggai chapter number two and verse nine Haggai two and verse nine the latter glory of this house with its successors to which Jesus came shall be greater than the former says the Lord of hosts and in this place I will give Peace and prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. Jump to Habakkuk chapter number 2 and verse 14. Habakkuk chapter number 2 and verse 14. But the time is coming when the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As the waters covers the sea. The Bible says, but the time is coming when the earth shall be filled with with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. It says the knowledge of the glory. Somebody shout the knowledge of the glory. We cannot access the glory without having the revelation knowledge of the glory. Therefore, I'm going to give you the knowledge of of the glory of God, the revelation knowledge, the revelation knowledge of the glory is going to give us access to the glory. How many of you want revelation knowledge of the glory? When it says knowledge there, it's not just natural knowledge, it is revelation knowledge. Somebody say revelation knowledge. Jump quickly to Isaiah 6 and verse 1. Isaiah 6 and verse 1. In the year that King Uzzah died, in a vision I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the skirts of his train filled the most holy temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings with two each covered his own face and with two each covered his feet and with two each flew. Watch this now. And one cried to another and said, Holy is the Lord." The host, the whole earth is filled with his glory. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Say with me, say the whole earth is filled with the glory of God. Watch this now. Habakkuk says the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. But Isaiah 6 says, the whole earth is filled with the glory of God. The whole earth can only be filled with the glory of God if people are filled with the revelation knowledge of the glory of God. Say with me, say the earth will be filled with the glory of God. But I will be filled with the revelation knowledge of his glory. I want us to look at this word. It is the Hebrew word, the word kabod. Now we pronounce it as kabod, but it's really in the Hebrew. When you speak Hebrew, you say it this way, kavod. Somebody say kavod. So it's not the kabod of God like we pronounce it in the English language. The proper pronunciation is the kavod of God. Somebody say the kavod of God. How many of you hungry for the kavod of God? The word kavod is one of the most significant words in the Hebrew language. It is, its literal meaning is weight. Somebody say weight. The Bible says when the, 
when, when, when he filled the temple, the weight, the kavod of God came into the place where the priest couldn't stand ministering because of the kavod, the heaviness of God's presence that had filled the house. How many of you have worshipped God in spirit and in truth and the kavod of God filled your room, filled the place where you couldn't stand in the presence of God? Your knees got weak because the kavod of God God's presence filled the place. Is there somebody like that this morning? Only a few people. So it means you're at the right place. Because we're about to experience the kavod of God's glory. We're about to experience the heaviness of God's presence. Come on, somebody. When the kavod came in to the temple, the Bible says, the priest couldn't stand ministering because of the glory of the Lord that had filled the temple. They probably wanted to preach. They probably wanted to take up an offering. They probably wanted to sing. But the Bible says the kavod. Somebody say kavod. The kavod of God filled the temple. Now let me get this straight to you. If you don't hunger for the kavod, the kavod will go by you and go to somebody that's hungry. I need to preach to hungry people this morning. How many became hungry for the kavod of God? Somebody say wait. Now watch this, the term is used figuratively in the sense of splendor, splendor. So when the kavod comes, the splendor of the king shows up. When the kavod shows up, it means abundance show up. We cannot say we have the glory of his presence, but we're in lack. Because when the kavod comes, abundance comes. So when you're still battling financially, it means the kavod of God's presence, the kavod of God's presence is absent. It means ikabot. There is no glory. There is no manifestation of the presence of God. When the kavod shows up in your life, abundance shows up. When the the kavod shows up, honor shows up. You'll be honored by kings and priests. You will have access supernaturally because of the kavod of God. Somebody say kavod. I came to prophesy this morning the kavod is getting ready to be released over South Africa. The kavod is getting ready to be released in New Zealand. God's going to pour out the heaviness of his presence. And when it shows up, abundance shows up. Honor shows up. Glory shows up. Somebody shout, it's glorious. In the Old Testament, kavod is used to describe an individual's wealth. When the glory shows up, wealth needs to show up. We cannot say we have the kavod, but we're still in lack. When kavod shows up, so when I say the glory of the Lord is here, it means wealth is coming. Increase is coming. Multiplication is coming. You're coming out of your lack. You're coming out of your poverty. Come on. When the king shows up in his glory, there's wealth. Come on. There's increase. There's multiplication. There's expansion on every side. Somebody shout the glory of the Lord. I feel it here. So it means wealth shows up. It means wealth. It means dignity, reputation. It means significance. It means strength, dignity, splendor, respect, holiness, greatness, excellence. Hence, the glory, kavod of God expresses all of his attributes. When the glory of God shows up, it expresses all of his attributes. Mercy, grace, power, love. When the glory shows up, all of the attributes of heaven shows up. It means when I say the glory of the Lord is here, it means God is here with all of his attributes, which means when the glory shows up, the fullness of heaven arrives. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I want the glory of God. Somebody shout, I want the glory of God. So the glory of God expresses all of its attributes. The glory of God is the essence of all that God is. We need to cross the line 
from the anointing to the glory. The, the, the anointing is related to your gift. You can be in sin and operate in the anointing. There is a limit to the anointing. The highest dimension to the anointing is the thousandfold anointing. Then you've reached the bar. You can't go higher. But the glory has no limitations. The glory has no restrictions. Come on, somebody. God is going to shift this church from the anointing to the glory. I say God's going to shift this church from the anointing to the glory. And when I say shift the church, I'm talking about you because I'm already there. I'm already in the glory. I need to take you to where I am. You see, you cannot go. If your minister is not there, if your pastor is not there, your pastor can't take you there. I can only take you where I am. I'm in the glory and I'm calling the church to the glory. Turn to somebody and say, cross the line. Therefore, you will never go higher than your leader. Come on. If your pastor is dead, you are dead. Come on. If your pastor's on fire and he moves in the glory, you will move in the glory. Come on, somebody. Because the oil flows from the head of Aaron down the beard, down the tonic. Come on, somebody. Turn to somebody and say, we're going to the glory. So now you can work the gift. And we have to be able to discern between the anointing and the glory. Because when the glory shows up, it's not your gift. It's God himself. So you can be in sin and fool around and still operate in the anointing. But God's glory will not be there. God's glory will not tolerate sin. Therefore, so many ministers have flies in the oil. Because they're living two lives. They're in sin and they're still operating in the anointing. <sighs> Turn to somebody say, we're crossing the line. Creative miracles only take place in the realm of the glory. You cannot flow in creative miracles in your anointing. Your anointing only, only reaches a certain level. Which is a thousand fold. You get a sixty fold, hundred fold, double portion, thousand fold. That's it. But once you've reached that level, you need to cross over into the glory. Listen, when the glory of God shows up, it's going to happen sovereignly. When the glory shows up, we don't have to pray for the sick. Sickness becomes illegal. When we move in the glory, therefore we now begin, we only sing songs of the glory. I've introduced the songs of the glory to the worship team. How many of you felt the shift? Therefore, we only sing songs of the glory because we want to move in the glory. When the glory shows up, the preacher don't need to preach for people to get healed. God comes himself. Come on. It means that no man receives glory. God receives the glory. God receives the honor. When we truly begin to move in the glory, this will be the sign. Pastor, we were just worshiping and suddenly my blind eye opened up. Pastor, we, do, we were just worshiping and in worship, my legs started growing out. We were just worshiping and the dead was raised. It means God showed up. It was not the gift of a man. Come on, somebody. Would you lift both your hands and say, I want the glory. I want the glory. I want the glory of God. Woo. The glory of God is the essence of all that He is. So the essence of all that God is shows up when the glory shows up. His manifest glory is eternity revealed on earth. His manifest glory is eternity revealed on earth. The glory of God was manifested at creation. Let's start here this morning. The glory of God is the spiritual atmosphere of heaven. Like air is the physical atmosphere of the earth. Adam and Eve was created in the environment of God's glory. Write this down. Everything is complete in the glory. Nothing is incomplete. Everything is complete in the glory. Nothing is incomplete. 
This glory was the life and environment in which the first human beings live. God created the first Adam in the environment of his glory. And the Bible says he blew, he blew, he blew the breath of life into them. Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 7. It says, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed. <sighs> That's the kavod of God. <sighs> he breathed. Into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. The presence of God is an environment. Write it down. Say with me, the presence of God is an environment. Listen now, if I remove a fish from its original environment, which is water, how many of you know it will die? If I take a plant and I pull it out by its roots and I just put it there on the ground, how many of you know it will die? Because it was removed from its environment. When God made us in the beginning, He made us in the environment. Eden was not a place, it was a time in space. When God made us, he made us in a time which is called the environment of his presence. When he made us in his presence, it was complete. It was total. There was no imperfection. Only when sin came into Eden, it corrupted the environment and man fell and became corrupted. The moment we move away from the glory of God, we become corrupt. The moment we move away from the environment of God's presence, we become wicked. The moment we move away from the glory of God, we begin to sin again. The moment we move away from the glory of God, we live wicked lives. The moment you move away from the glory of God, you will cheat on your wife. The moment you move away from the glory of God, your house falls apart. The moment you move away from the glory of God, sickness comes back into your body. Turn to somebody and say, stay in the environment. You were created for the glory of God. I say you were created for the presence of God. You were created to live in Eden. Eden is in you. It's not a designated place. It is an environment. Come on, somebody. Eden is no longer on the outside. Eden is on the inside. You have the glory of God on the inside of you. Shake three people. Say you have the glory of God on the inside of you. Woo. It was not about Adam and Eve being in the garden. It's about the garden being in them. Oh my God. I say it's not about Adam and Eve being in the garden. It's about the garden being in them. Eden was the environment of God's presence. So we have Eden now on the inside of us. Where's the scripture? Thank you for asking. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I have the glory of God on the inside of me. Therefore, the glory of God is no longer in the tabernacle made by the hands of man. I have the glory of God. I have the presence of God residing and abiding permanently on the inside of me. And the devil has no access to my garden. Whew. The devil has no right to my garden. I carry the environment of God's presence. Therefore, when you open up your mouth, you open up the gate of Eden. Which means when you begin to preach, the atmosphere shifts. When you begin to sing, the atmosphere shifts. Come on. I'm talking about now the knowledge of God's glory. How many of you want to move in the glory? You're getting the knowledge of the glory. Come on. I say now when you sing or not, you have the revelation knowledge. I'm releasing Eden. I'm changing the atmosphere from a dead atmosphere to a lively atmosphere. I'm changing the atmosphere from a sickness atmosphere to a healing atmosphere. I shift the atmosphere. I open the gate of Eden. I release the environment. I shift atmosphere. God, I feel it here. Somebody shout, I have revelation knowledge. Somebody shout, devil, it's too late. 
I have revelation of the glory. I'm going to move in the glory. I'm going to move in the glory. Give God praise if you believe it. Come on. Woo. Lay your hand in your belly. Say I have Eden on the inside of me. The environment of God's presence. Woo. In Eden there's miracles. I say in Eden there's miracles. It's complete. Everything you need is in Eden. Step into the environment. Come on. Step into the realm of the glory. Eden was a moment in time in which the manifestation of God's glory could be seen. A moment in time in which the manifestation of God's glory could be seen. How many of you are hungry to see the glory of God? See the manifest presence like it was under the old covenant. Come on. How much more in the new covenant with a better covenant, with better rights, with better promises. Come on somebody. Jesus says the same glory I have, Father. Give that same glory to them. They will move in that same glory. They will move in that same power. Come on. Somebody say movement, movement, movement. Eden was a movement in which the manifestation of God's glory could be visibly seen. Somebody shout, I'm going to see the glory. Woo. Somebody say moment, 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 moment. Why do I use the phrase moment? Because God only manifests himself where he is being worshipped in spirit and in truth. God is everywhere, omnipresent, but he doesn't manifest himself everywhere. So people came to me and said, Pastor, you know we can go to any church because God is everywhere. God only manifests himself where he's been worshipped in spirit and in truth. Because theology without an experience is just dead science. Because you can get a preacher, duomini, de demon, I mean deacon, up here preaching and there's nothing. Every Sunday you know exactly what's about to happen next. No manifestation of God's presence. And the saddest thing is this. So many ministers are still moving in the residue of the glory. People live for 930 years on the residue of the glory of God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss the movement of God's glory. I don't want to miss the movement of God's presence. I want to experience the movement. I want to experience the cloud of his presence. I want to visibly, tangibly experience his presence where signs, wonders, and miracles break out. Somebody shout the movement of the glory. Whew. So God manifests himself where he's, being, where he's being worshipped in spirit and in truth. Where his Holy Spirit, spirit of glory is welcome to move. That is where God manifests himself. How many of you are getting something here this morning? When we are in the presence of God, we go from one dimension of glory to the next dimension of glory. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, it says, And all of us, as with unveiled faces, because we continue to, be, to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transfigured into his very own image. Somebody shout, transformation comes in the glory. If you don't transform, you conform. And that conformity becomes your reality. If you conform to that sickness, it means that sickness becomes your reality. If you conform to poverty, that poverty becomes your reality. If you conform to the level you are at right now with God, that 
becomes your reality. Somebody say transformation. It's only the glory of God that transforms us. The Bible says the glory of God transformed Moses. That when he came from the mountain, his face literally shone with the glory of God. That people couldn't even look upon him. That, he, that they had to veil his face because of the radiance of the glory of God. Somebody shout transformation comes in the glory. With the anointing, you can reach a city. With the glory, you reach continents. With the glory, you reach the vault. With the glory, the entire city can be saved in, the, in one day. Come on, somebody. Because of the glory, God led more than three million Israelites out of Egypt. Cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. That's the cloud of God's glory. That that's the manifest presence of God in one day three million got saved it's the glory movement somebody say it's the glory movement come on somebody so in the glory we transform but watch this into his very own image which means in the glory we become like Christ it says increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another say with me from one degree of glory to another. Write this down. The anointing works in levels. When God anoints you, you take one step. The anointing works in levels. Say it with me. The anointing works in level. I'll get a better response. There we know Zealand. Say with me. The anointing works in levels. See they're shouting that side. <laughs> Say with me. The anointing works in levels. I don't know about you. I'm grateful for the anointing, but I want to go from glory to glory. Why? Thank you for asking. Because in the anointing, we go one step at a time. In the glory, we go seven steps at once. Because the glory consists out of dimensions. My God. I say the glory consists out of dimensions. A dimension is seven steps at once. I say a dimension is seven steps at at once. I know the word of God has spoken to your heart. Please make contact with us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Remember, we are a church for all nations and all generations. So please come and visit us.